Solving an inequality is a lot like solving an equation where you can multiply both sides by the same number, add or subtract things from the same sides. Um, so for this question, what I'm going to do is I want to cancel all of the fractions. There's a 2 and a 4 and then a 2. So if I multiply both sides by 4, all the denominators will be canceled. So I'll start there. So I have 4 times 3 halves plus, then I have 4 times 1 fourth, and then an x minus 7. On the other side, I'll have 4 times 1, plus 4 times x over 2. And it still is less than or equal to. If at the start, if this is less than this, and everything gets multiplied by 4, it must be that this brand new side is still less than or equal to this side. So now I can just like continue and let's see, um, I can cancel a factor of two. Here the one fourth and four cancel. And on this side we have a two going in twice there. So I'm just gonna multiply across now where we have two times three, which is six. I'm left with just X minus seven. And that's less than or equal to 4 plus 2x. Let's see. Um, I don't need the parentheses on the left side, so now I can start simplifying the left. That's 6 minus 7, so this is going to be x minus 1 is less than or equal to 4 plus 2x. So just simplify the left side. That shouldn't change anything. Uh, now I'm going to take the step where I'll I'm going to add 1 to both sides. And at the same time, I'm going to subtract 2x. I do this, on the left I get negative x, and on the right I get 5. And we're almost done, except there's this negative in front of the x. Now, if I divide both sides by negative 1, that'll take care of it. I mean, that'll give me x. On the right, we'll have negative 5. But here's the only thing you have to be careful about when solving inequality. If you multiply or divide both sides by a negative number, it switches the direction of the inequality. So it becomes greater than. So that changed. And the reason is because we divided by negative one. So here's our answer. X is greater than or equal to negative five. If I wanna draw this on the number line that is given below, I'm gonna put a closed circle at negative five that's right there. A closed circle because in this inequality, it's not only greater than, it's greater than or equal to. And then I want to shade in the direction that is greater than negative 5. And this is our answer. Example 2 is one of the uh, compound inequalities that we're going to solve. So there's like two portions to it. There's this 5x minus 1 is less than 9, but there's also 2x plus 7 is greater than or equal to 1. So when there's this and here, it means that whatever you get for each answer, your final answer has to be true for both of these inequalities. So neither of these is too difficult to solve. I think, um, I'll add one to both sides here, which gives me 5x is less than 10. On the other one, I'm going to I'll subtract 7 from both sides, and I get that 2x is greater than or equal to negative 6. On the left, I'm going to divide both sides by 5. On this right here, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. Notice in both of these, I divided both sides by a positive number. This means that the direction of the inequality does not change. So we have x is less than 2, and then we have x is greater than or equal to negative 3. So when we say and, we're actually putting these together. If I was to write this in one line without saying and, that would be, well, I know that x is greater than or equal to negative 3, but it also has to be less than 2. So it's completely okay to, you know, state your answer 
like this entire line here, but it is equivalent to write it in one more concise way like this. It also makes it easier to draw the answer on the number line. So at negative three, I'm gonna put a closed circle. At positive two, I'll put an open circle and I get everything in between these values. So this is my solution. Greater than or equal to negative three, but also less than two. And the second type of compound inequality you can have is something that isn't and, but in fact is or. So you can see there's or written here. Um, so this means that you'll get two separate pieces, but you actually want to include both of those, not like the overlap of the two. So, you know, writing this again, I get 0 0.04 minus 0 0.02x is greater than or equal to 0 0.2. And then over on this other one, we have x plus a half is strictly greater than 3 fourths x. So one with decimals, one with fractions. So whatever I get for both of these answers, I want to include both, not restrict them, since this is or. On the left one, I'm going to multiply everything by 100. The reason is that's just going to cancel the decimal for me. It changes this to 4 minus 2x. On the other side, we get 20, but it still is greater than or equal to. Okay, maybe now I'll subtract 4 from both sides. So I get negative 2x is greater than or equal to 16. But now I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2. And as we've seen before, that gives me x. But now it's going to be less than or equal to negative 8. And that's as far as I can take this one. For my other inequality, just like in the first one, I want to cancel the 2 and the 4. So I'm going to multiply 4 to every single term. This gives me 4x plus, well, 4 times a half is 2. On the other side, we're going to get 3x, and I still have greater than. Maybe now I'll subtract 3x, but also subtract 2. This gives me x is greater than negative 2. And the, I'll write it again, but that's x less than or equal to negative 8, or x greater than negative 2. On a number line, let's see, at negative 8, I want to include that but I want to be less than it. Um, then I have negative 2. I'll put an open circle there. And I want to be greater than it. So this is my solution. Basically, it's saying nothing here, just none of that stuff. It starts at negative 8 and goes left, then picks up a positive, sorry, negative 2 and goes to the right. And that's the final answer for this example.